So what I would love to do now is to share with you a trick that isn't in my PowerPoint, but it's one that's been used by people all over the world who are very, very, very rich and famous, including Oprah Winfrey, Jim Carrey, Barack Obama, and many, many, many more, and including Samantha Kelly, actually. <laughs> yes, and it's called creative visualization. You've probably heard of it. But it requires that you put down your gadgets and your phones and all your bits. You gotta put them all down on the floor. So this might be the very first time today that you've uh, had to let go of your gadget. You might be feeling awkward. You might be feeling a bit, uh, I don't know, shaky, weird. I see a lady still not wanting to relinquish her gadget, but I'm not going to start until you all do. Okay, put it down. Jag deep. Miriam. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is because I don't think any of you has come here today just to find out how to get the attention of the media. Is that true? That is true. There's obviously something more that you want. I think that all of you have a business. Am I right? Is there anyone here who doesn't have a business? Okay, there's a couple of people who don't have a business. That's okay, you can just listen. <laughs> but everyone else has a business, right? And presumably you want your business to be successful. Yeah? Does anyone here not want their business to be successful? No? Okay. Sometimes there is somebody. Uh, <laughs> So, I'm going to show you a trick for putting you in the right frame of mind and boosting your positivity so that you can be your most effective selves when you go out, not only to get the attention of the media, but also to get the attention of the customers and the world. So, you're going to just tune yourselves into the frequency of the most positive you that you can be. And all you have to do for this is close your eyes and imagine for a moment, I see a gentleman not closing his eyes, in the blue stripy shirt with a pink stripy tie, okay. <laughs> closing his eyes and just imagine that your business is now as successful as Microsoft or Apple or whoever it is that you think is the most successful business that you, and in fact, the most successful business that you want to be. So you are making the most money that you want to make and you're having the best time and you've got the best team and you're having the most exciting days and you're really, really, really excited about your legacy that you can leave and you're just buzzed. Still a lady with her eyes open staring at me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so really feel it. Really, 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 really feel it. I'll give you a moment. Even the kid. Close your eyes, kid. <laughs> Are you feeling it? Are you feeling it? Okay, well, I need to know that you're feeling it and I need you to go, Yes! A little bit louder. Yes! Louder again. Yes! Okay, I sense you're feeling it. It's good. So next time you get interviewed by a journalist, that's the very first thing you have to do, okay? <laughs> okay, now the next thing I need to say before I even start on the PowerPoint is that we, the journalists, actually love meeting you, the people the business people. We really enjoy it. It's very exciting for us. It's very inspiring. Um, I would not have met Samantha Kelly had it not been for my interviewing her. So that's uh, also Katerina Hogan. Neve Hogan is here somewhere. Neve Hogan. Uh, these ladies who are back on their gadgets over here. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam and Jagdeep and all the amazing people and the people I've spoken to today already, Helena, I would not have met you had I not been a journalist about to interview people. So some of the most exciting things that have happened to me in my life have come about because of my job. So we, we actually are dying to meet you. 
we're really, really, really excited about it. And I will be hoping to talk to as many people as possible today about what you do, because I need your stories. And that's actually in my PowerPoint. I'm going to move on to that. We need you, because if we didn't have you, what would we write about? Hmm? What would we put... I have a radio show every Thursday night on Dublin City FM. A few of you have already been on the show. Hands up, everyone who's been on the show. Not that many, but a few of you. And I'm going to need someone this Thursday, that's tomorrow, and I'm going to need someone next Thursday, and the week after that, and the week after that. So I actually always need someone every Thursday. So I can get through you in the next three years. <laughs> and then I'll run out and I'll need more people. That's how it is for us, okay? That's how it is for editors, that's how it is for researchers, that's how it is for television producers. We need fodder. We need cannon fodder. <laughs> you are the cannon fodder. That's why I chose this um, in this today image. Anyway, so you got, so bear that in mind, that's the first thing to bear in mind when you're approaching the press or the media, is that we're waiting for it. We want you, we need you, we're looking for you. Okay, a little bit about me. You may or may not know that I'm already, <laughs> that I am a freelance journalist. So I've been doing this job for 25 years now. I've been writing for newspapers and magazines and I've been presenting a radio show for about three years. And I've also done a little bit of television. So my job is to find stories and sell them just in the same way that your job is to find customers and sell them, sell your stuff to them. These are some of my customers. So as you can see, there's a, w a very wide range of publications that I sell to all over the world, uh, ranging from the New York Daily News, the Irish Post, the Times, Sunday Times, Independent. Uh, so these are all very different customers with very different demographics, very different needs and requirements. And what I do is pretty much the same as what you do. I try to find out what my customers want, what makes them happy, and I try to give it to them. And I try to give it to them consistently so that they will trust me. So the next time I call up an editor at The Guardian and say, hey, I've got this uh, lovely lady and she's got a beautiful story, what do you think? They'll be interested to know because they will know that the stories that I've sent them in the past have been amazing <laughs> and the readers have loved them, yeah? So, okay, that's just a little bit about that. It's a tiny bit of showing off. My first top tip, and this is something that seems to work across the board in the media, is try to find some kind of celebrity connection for your product or service. So, if you can get Kim Kardashian to love your stuff, that's going to be, <laughs> that's going to really help. Um, Kim Kardashian, you probably have heard of her. Has anyone not heard of Kim Kardashian? Somebody in the room has not heard of Kim Kardashian. Wow. <laughs> That's the first. Okay, so most people in the world, probably 99.9% .9 in the world, have heard of Kim Kardashian. I don't know why that is. I've never seen her show. I don't like her. I have no interest in her. But every time I open a paper or a magazine or look online, there she is, right? So she's obviously a master at getting the attention of the media. So in a way, she's done your job for you. Because all you now have to do is to shove your product in her hand <laughs> and, and make, you know, make sure she's seen with it. So it's possible that you may not all have access to Kim Kardashian. That is true. But it is all equally possible that you will have access to somebody who's in the media particularly in Ireland, because it's a very small country. So almost everybody is related to everyone else already. And that means that you're probably already related to a celebrity. Um, if you're not, you can always pay. That's, that's the other one. <laughs> um, celebrities hire themselves out to turn up at your press launch or to, at your media launch. And they will also hire themselves out to wear your stuff and to tweet about you and advertise your products. So it's worth looking into who might you 
be able to contact and you can contact people through their agencies. I know that uh, Brendan O'Connor is advertising Mace supermarkets. Um, various chefs are, uh, Kevin Dundon is advertising a super value. Um, okay, anyone else know of any celebrities advertising stuff? Katie Taylor is advertising car insurance. You don't have to um, pay a lot of money. You might be able to do a deal. Quite a lot of these celebrities, even though they're famous, they don't have a lot of money. And they don't have a steady income because it's not actually a job. It doesn't have a pension. And it's not a job for life. So people who are in the media now might not be in five years' time. So they're trying to get as much money as they can now. And that means that they might be willing to accept free makeup, free hair products, free clothes, free jewelry, free handbags, free shoes, free life coaching, free pretty much anything you guys have to offer. You've had an experience, Helena, I know, of having a celebrity wear your jewelry on expose. Right, yeah, so Helena's already had experience of that. Um, I mean, I've worked all the celebrities I know to, for my products. I've got a book, and I've got my partner, Shane McGowan, on the cover, and I've also got an endorsement from Kate Moss. That all helps, you know? So, uh, I'm not going to say stalk celebrities, but definitely schmooze them. <laughs> if you ever come across a celebrity anywhere, schmooze him or offer them your stuff for free and see if they will promote it for you or tweet about it or take a picture of them with it behind their head and tweet that. <laughs> um, but a word of warning, a word of warning, make sure you use the right celebrity. Now, Neil Hogan, she does a beautiful range of anti-aging skincare products. I don't think I would advise her to use Mick Jagger yeah. <laughs> to advertise that. Although, if Mick Jagger does come to your launch party, that will guarantee you attention. So that will guarantee you getting into the gossip columns and the social diaries, and you probably will get on expose. You might get even, you know, coverage on the main evening news because he's a celebrity. So somebody like Madonna is obviously more suitable for things like, like she's promoting coconut water. I don't think many people in this country even knew what coconut water was until they heard about Madonna drinking it and looking amazing and staying, you know, looking 30 at 50 or whatever it is. Uh, so obviously she's a great fit. So think about who is a good fit for your product. Um, jewelry, obviously, you know, Ros Purcell or Rosanna Davison or um, any of the glamorous female celebrities. Makeup, jewelry, skincare products, handbags, so yeah, th thinking along those lines. Um, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West recently honeymooned in Ireland. And that really, that actually put Ireland on the map for a lot of people in America who didn't know where it was. They stayed at a place called Bally Finn. So they also put this hotel on the map because most Americans would never have heard of Bally Finn. Um, I did a story about Bally Finn for an online magazine called Billionaire.com, which is obviously catering to billionaires around the world. And it was very easy for me to pitch to them, having, ha having got Kim and Kanye uh, in my pitch. I also used the fact that Bono and his wife spent their anniversary here. So when I'm pitching a story to the media about a hotel, it's very useful for me to have the names of some famous people who've stayed there. That really helps to sell it. So I got a free holiday here, and uh, Kim and Kanye got a free honeymoon, and they got free publicity, so it's a win-win. Uh, the other option, and Samantha Kelly knows all about this, is become a celebrity yourself. <coughs> Samantha went on Dragon's Den. Um, there are many um, reality shows, talent shows, being made all the time, and they're always looking for contestants. So there's, there's something you can do if you can cook, if you can uh, entertain, or if you just want to go on one of the business shows, there's constantly a requirement for people to do this sort of thing. 
And once you've actually done this, you then get invited to be in magazines like VIP and OK, and you get photographed for the social diaries and for the gossip columns. So it sort of kind of builds your profile. And as you build your profile, you also build the profile of your business. Would you agree with that, Sam? I would. She would agree with that. <laughs> Another thing Sam would agree with, nudity attracts a lot of attention in the media. I know. <laughs> it always has. Some of you guys have posed naked for a calendar. Oh, yeah. No. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I spent a year researching nudity in the media when I was starting out in journalism. And I was very surprised to find out that, I mean, obviously the tabloids love tits, right? You know, page three in the sun, uh, the mirror, whatever, the star. That's pretty obvious. But when I was looking into what people in the Times and the Guardian were writing about nudity, I realized that they were using pictures, they were still using naked pictures but they were just framing it in a more artistic context. So they would say, oh, isn't it terrible that naked pictures are being used in the sun? And they'd write an article about that. So everybody who's, you know, editing and publishing knows that nudity sells and they will try to figure a way to put it in, if at all possible, and if you have a nice naked picture, they will use it. Uh, nudity, even when you're very, a little bit older, will sell. <laughs> It will always attract attention. So here are some ladies posing naked for a charity calendar. It's not uh, you guys, I, I didn't find your picture. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's a great way, it's a very immediate way to attract attention. Kate Moss can even sell car tires by taking off her clothes. You can really sell anything with a, a nice looking naked lady. Um, if you are a bloke, it helps to be cute yourself, obviously. <laughs> These guys, they, these are the happy pair twins. Does, that, does everybody know who they are? So this picture got around a lot, didn't it? It got into a lot of places because they are cute and they know it and they're working in it. And even uh, one of the pictures they sent out was a picture of them in their swimming trunks, very, very tiny swimming trunks running into the sea. Just, you know, showing a bit of flesh. If you have a beautiful husband or wife, and you can persuade them to be in your press pictures, that's really helpful. Jamie Oliver is working his very beautiful wife, Jules, here. And he's also working his kids, if you have cute kids. As, as you probably know for yourselves, we all love pictures of cute kids. So even if you're not cute yourself, but your kids are cute, <laughs> just send in a picture of your kids. Okay, another thing, and you, you're probably already aware of this, is if you've had a story, like Carol has had, in which you triumph over adversity in some way, so you've got a handicap or an obstacle in your way and it's, it, it seems insurmountable, and you triumph, we love that. I mean, that's one of our absolute favorite stories because that really inspires us and it inspires the readers. So that's a nice way, it's not trashy, you know. You don't have to be naked for this. And people love it. So just think about what about you? What have you overcome? What's been, you know, your obstacle? Uh, these guys here, Ben and Jerry's. Everyone recognize Ben and Jerry's? Anyone ever tried Ben and Jerry's? Yeah, those guys are pretty much working the angle that they're normal guys next door. They're really ordinary. They started out with a $5 correspondence course in ice cream making. And their first shop was a converted gas station in their hometown. And now they're a global multi-billion dollar industry. But they they really like to work the boy next door, the man next door, the man in the street, the nice normal guy angle. And that really works too because people love to see like a hometown boy made good, hometown girl made good. That's a nice story, isn't it? Uh, this guy on the right, he's called Sir Jack Leslie. Has anyone ever heard of him? Yeah, from Castle Leslie in County Monaghan. Now, Jack is famous because he started clubbing when he was about 80, going to like raves. And for his 85th birthday, he went to manumission in Ibiza. And I went with him and I did a story about it. And some people made a documentary about us. 
And so he got media attention all over the world. So he put Castle Leslie on the map. Hello, Helena. <laughs> Don't that gadget. Anyway, he put that Castle Leslie on the map for dancing, even though it has nothing to do with the castle. The castle is run as a hotel, but they're using him to promote. Yeah? So, like, if you've got a very eccentric relation who collects handbags, like if your grandfather collects handbags, <laughs> or, you know, collects shoes or something weird, just think about, is there something weird about you or your relations or your kids or your dogs? Your dog has one leg. I don't know what it is, but use it. This kid over here, where is he gone? He's gone. That kid would be perfect. I'm going to try and find him and interview him in a minute. Inspire people. Susan Boyle does not look like a pop star, does she? No, and she's not even the right age for a pop star. But she made it. So she, she triumphed against the odds and she also is living the dream as a pop star. So people absolutely love that. They love that you have beaten the odds, you've you know, made it work somehow, magically. It's like a fairy story. We love fairy stories. Make friends with the media. Make friends with us. Something that, I, when I was researching this talk, I spoke to a number of editors and I asked them, you know, how can people get your attention? And they said, well, the number one thing is to remember that we're people. Remember, we're human beings, okay? And we're not just a newspaper. So when you're writing to us, we're trying to find out our actual name. Find out our name. Find out, you know, follow us on Twitter. Retweet our tweets. Say nice things about us. Read our stuff and say nice things about our stuff. Flatter us. Basically, pursue us in the way that you might pursue a lover. Court us. <laughs> Just like, well, you know, you, like, it, it can't be emphasized enough how important that is. Build a relationship with us in the same way that you would build a relationship with someone you fancy. It's that simple. Take us out to dinner. Buy us drinks. Give us stuff. <laughs> but, a word of warning. Do not get carried away. Does everyone remember John Travolta and Scarlett Johansson at the Oscars? Yes. Yes. So basically he got a bit too close and a bit too familiar and she was not loving it. Not liking it at all, you can tell from her face. So do not stalk us, do not turn up at our houses unannounced, do not phone us at all hours of the day and night. You know, keep a sensible distance, don't go crazy, but do send us free stuff. <laughs> we love a freebie. <laughs> Um, if you send me an Aston Martin, I'm more likely to write a nice story about Aston Martin, yeah? I didn't actually get given an Aston Martin, but I got given a free trip to the south of France to test drive the new Aston Martin. And I simply couldn't turn it down. And once I'd driven that thing, I couldn't write anything bad about it because it was just too good. <laughs> it was just too nice. Um, so a lot of the stories I've done have been based on really nice stuff that people have given me like really nice holidays, in really nice places. And sometimes it's just, you know, they might just give you, so they send you some books, or they send you some makeup, or they send you some shoes or handbags, whatever it is. Even if we don't use it ourselves, we can always wrap it up and give it to people for Christmas. Uh, Roisin Engel at the Irish Times, who is a very lovely and honest lady, said that you will always get her attention if you send a freebie because she will notice there's a nice parcel waiting to be opened. And it's like Christmas, you know, you want to open the parcel so you'll remember that person more than if they just send you a press release, which you get thousands of and they're really boring. Okay, very important to remember that. When you are writing your press release, uh, there's a lovely lady here called Katerina Hogan, who's a wordsmith. Stand up, Katrina. <laughs> Katrina is here available, you can negotiate with her to write you a really snappy press release. Most important thing is keep it short. Keep all the relevant information in the very first paragraph because we will not read beyond the very first paragraph. 
and also try to get as much of it into the tagline. So anything that you really have to say to us, put it in the tagline, because we need to know it immediately, and we don't need to read the whole page. We certainly do not need to read your life history, your biography, where you went to school, what your hobby, you know, none of that stuff. We just want the, the facts. We also want high-resolution images available immediately. We don't want to have to waste any of our time getting pictures. And we do need pictures. Even if you're sending stuff to the radio, a press release, send a nice picture. We like to look at pictures. Oh yeah, and be prepared to talk. Uh, you wouldn't believe the number of times I have found people and said, okay, I'd love to interview and interview you. And they have said, oh, but I'm scared. I don't want to be interviewed, I'm scared. So, like, it's a waste of our time, right, if they don't want to be interviewed. So, find somebody who can practice your interview with you so that you are comfortable with it. I myself have now set up in business as a media coach because of this, because I've met so many people who are terrified of being interviewed. So, if anyone wants a media coach, talk to me afterwards, and I will talk you through the process of being interviewed, I'll interview you for radio, so you get comfortable with the sound of your voice, get comfortable with your story, and we can figure out what bits of your story are going to be interesting and useful. What bits will people want to read about? What, people, what bits will sell you and your business? Be ready for the customers. That's important too. I was doing a detox retreat um, a few years ago, and I went on one of those morning telly programs, you know, there's like Morning Island or something, to talk about it. And I forgot that people were likely to start phoning up during the show, so I had my phone turned off. 300 people tried to phone me during the show, so I was not ready. I hadn't thought about that. So just make sure that if you go, go big on a campaign, like if you decide, a friend of mine did, recently did a piece in the Sunday World, he was interviewed by the Sunday World, and he is now booked up until the end of July. He's a hypnotist. So just be prepared for customers, yeah? Thank you. That's pretty much everything I have to say.